Hello, my name is Dr. Asley. I'm a board certified fellowship trained spine surgeon. I'm the medical director here in Spine Treatment Center. In this section, I would like to teach my patients something about the imaging studies that we use to come up with a diagnosis of what's wrong with their back. After all, we truly believe that first step in treating the patient is knowledge for them to understand what's going on. Therefore, they need to understand how to read studies, imaging studies, so they have an understanding of what's wrong with their back. We order different tests for different reasons. We'll be looking for different things in the body to come up with a diagnosis. One of the most commonly used uh, tests that we use is MRI, which stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. Before that, we used, we used to rely on physical examinations, we still do, um, x-rays, and other tests, uh, imaging studies that they were not very good. However, in 1980s, MRIs came out. Now, actually, we could see inside the patient the soft tissue very well and find out actually what is going on, what is the problem. What MRI is, is that uh, it's a big magnet. A patient uh, lies inside the magnet for about 45 minutes. During that time, the big magnet magnetizes the water molecules. And as the magnet stops, the water molecules spin back to where their original position was and they emit that energy. And there's a sensor that can actually get that. Basically, what the MRI does, it looks for water content. Water is light. Dark means dry. Very simple. Why? After all, our body is composed of many different tissues. Skin, fat, nerve, cartilage, bone, muscle, and they all have different water content. Therefore, if you put them all together, they will look different based on their water content. Now, uh, there are two ways of looking at the imaging studies on the body. One is what we call the sagittal views. Basically, cuts you in half and you're looking from side on and this image goes from right to left or it can be an axial views which is basically cut you in half on a, on a horizontal fashion and you're looking from below up and this is an example as you can see this is an example of an MRI so light means water dark means dry now I'll be reviewing these studies with you this is an example of what we call a sagittal views as you can see right here, the patient has been sliced right down the middle. And you're looking from side on. The slices go from the left, middle, to right. Let's focus on this picture, which is the middle. As you can see right here, this is the spine. This is probably either vena cava or aorta on top of the spine. These are the spinal cord that comes in and terminates right here. And these are nerves that they come down and they form sciatic nerve. So actually sciatic nerve is composed of five or six different nerve roots. They come together and form the sciatic nerve. These squares are the bones that are stacked up on top of each other. This is sacrum, L5, L4, L3, L2, L1, and thoracic 12. And these, in between the bones, there are cartilage, we call them discs. Very important. Now let's look at this patient. Of course, we've crossed out the name for OSHA uh, regulations. As you can see right here, these discs pretty much look very similar and they're nice and light. That means they're nice and hydrated. After all, as we age, the discs start desiccating. They lose their water content. It's like a fruit. When it's nice and fresh and juicy, it's very good, but it gets dry and it just kind of loses the water content. As you can see, all these discs look similar. And now you can see that this disc is particularly very different. It's narrowed, bone contacting bone, and is squeezed out. The content has been squeezed out and you have a herniation or bulge in the back. So you can see that most of the discs look the same and one doesn't look that good at all. So if this patient comes to me and tells me that they have suffering from low back pain, a lot at the lumbosacral junction, I can say that, uh-huh, I think I know what's going on. You have a bad disc causing most of your pain. Now, you, this is very important. You got to understand that there's no correlation between the severity of what I see on the MRI and symptoms. 
people could be suffering from a very bad disc and be reasonably comfortable. For example, you can have patients that they have discs similar to this and they're pretty comfortable. Or you can have patients that actually, they have a very minor findings on the MRI, but they're in severe pain. Therefore, you cannot look at the MRI either date or you cannot say how much pain the patient is in. Now, this is an example of what we call an axial views. These are cuts like this. So you, if you look at these images, it, coming down from L3, L4, L5, and this is the S1. And as you look in any, any image, right, for example, right here, if this is the waist, this is the right side, this is the left side. So you can see at the cross sections, the patient's legs are sticking out and the body is on the other side. So by looking at the spine in two different aspects, you can locate and see what could be the pathology. Now, if what the patient tells you, for example, back and a left leg pain, uh, back and right leg pain, and you look at the MRIs and you say, aha, uh -huh, I can see what could cause the back pain. And you look at the images and you say, aha, uh -huh, I see a pinched nerve. That could cause leg pain. Then you know, more likely than not, what is causing the problem, what we call a concordant finding. I hope you enjoyed this segment and in the next segment I'll be talking to you about a CT scan. Have a nice day.